The Stormlands is one of the seven kingdoms that I never thought I'd be making one of these videos for. But to my surprise, a lot of you guys in the comments wanted to see the map detailed. My guess is because it's the only kingdom to not appear on the show, and probably never will. But there are a lot of lore heavy locations to talk about. The Stormlands are surrounded by the Crownlands, Dorne, the Reach, and the Narrow Sea. Its name comes from the ruthless storms that hit the rocky shores from the sea and the frequent raining. House Baratheon may be in power now, but the now extinct Storm Kings once ruled here for thousands of years. The Baratheons are a new house in comparison to the ancient houses all over Westeros. House Durandon, or the Storm Kings, had a lot more land under their control back then over what you see in front of you now. Before the Crownlands were a place, it was under the Kingdom of the Storm, and at one point, all of the Riverlands and some area to the west. House Durandon was founded by Duran God's Grief. Each castle he built would be destroyed by storms from Shipbreaker Bay. One of the wild legends in this story is that Duran angered the Sea God and Goddess of the Wind after marrying their daughter. The first castle he built was destroyed by a storm on their wedding night, killing everyone except the two of them because of his wife's protection. Six castles were raised and destroyed until Storm's End was built and withstood the crazy weather. Some believe Brandon the Builder had a part in its construction, and others believe it's magic that makes the walls so powerful. When the Targaryens came around, Oris Baratheon, a supposed Targaryen bastard, killed the last Storm King and was awarded the kingdom. Oris married the last Storm King's daughter and kept House Durandon's sigil and words. The last Storm King inspired Aegon the Conqueror to take over all of Westeros after talks between the two went bad. The last Storm King wanted Aegon's help against House Hor, who controlled the Riverlands and Iron Islands at the time. They rejected each other's offers, but the Storm King was insulted and angry and had the messenger's hands cut off. Storm's End is on Durand's point at the shores of Shipbreaker Bay. Shipbreaker Bay has taken countless ships due to the weather and rocks, including Robert, Stannis, and Renly's parents. The Mad King sent his cousin Stefan Baratheon to Essos to find a bride with Valyrian blood for Rhaegar Targaryen. After being unable to find what he was looking for, Stefan and his wife's ship sank while Robert and Stannis witnessed it all. Northeast of Storm's End is an island called Tarth. Is that Estimon? Tarth, said Jamie. The Sapphire Isle. It's ruled from Evenfall Hall by House Tarth. The island is said to be beautiful having lakes, waterfalls, soaring mountains, high meadows, and shadowed vales. Jamie Lannister tries to rescue Brienne during his travels with her by lying about Tarth's other name. They call it Sapphire Isle, you know why? Every sapphire in Westeros was mined on Tarth. Sapphires are gemstones, the blue ones. I know what they are. Lord Selwyn would pay his daughter's weight in sapphires if she's returned to him. Tarth is actually called Sapphire Isle because of how blue the waters are. Jamie saved Brienne, but just had to keep on talking. You're nothing without your daddy. Your daddy ain't here. Never forget that. Yeah, this should help you remember. <laughs> The waters between the mainland and Tarth are called the Straits of Tarth. It didn't make much sense for the Storm Kings or Baratheons to have a naval fleet, but some ships have been docked here since Tarth would serve as a natural shield from the storms and Shipbreaker Bray has its name for a reason. The other island in this kingdom is Estermont, a small and mountainous island in the narrow sea. Like Tarth, the island shares its name with the ruling house. Robert, Stannis, and Renly's mother Cassandra was a lady from House Estermont. During a stay at their home of Greenstone, Cersei and Jaime messed around and believed they conceived Joffrey here. Jaime refers to this castle as green shit. A forest that lies in both the Crownlands and the Stormlands is the Kingswood. There's a private area of the forest reserved for whenever the King of the Seven Kingdoms wants to go on a hunt. It was a boar in the Kingswood that took Robert Baratheon's life early in the series. We were hunting it. A boar. My fault. <laughs> Too much wine. Missed my thrust. <laughs> I paid the bastard back, Ned. I drove my knife right through his brain. You ask him if I didn't. Ask him. Within this forest is the Wendwater, 
a river that serves as a border for the two regions. The Kingswood is a large chunk of land but was once insanely vast. Before all these places had names, a forest here was so large that it was once connected to what is now known as the Rainwood. Many children of the forest made this place their home, but when the first men made their way to Westeros from the east, they began cutting down all the trees. Durant Godsgrief had many battles with the children when he was bringing the forest into his kingdom. During the rule of a weaker Storm King, a woods witch who was called the Green Queen rebelled and conquered the Rainwood for a generation. Half of the Rainwood was burned down from a Dornish attack 300 years before the current story began. The Stormlands and Dorne have always had a very heated hatred for one another, and it only got worse when Dorne was the only kingdom unable to be conquered by the Targaryens. This was during a time called the First Dornish War. The Rainwood is in the peninsula called Cape Wrath. There's a ton of houses that surround the forest on Cape Wrath. In the northern portion is Griffin's Roost, out west is Crow's Nest and Stonehelm. Mistwood and Weeping Town in the south. Griffin's Roost became a very interesting place after reading the last book, Dance with Dragons. During Robert's rebellion, the Lord of Griffin's Roost, John Cunnington, sided with the Mad King instead of his liege lord, Robert Baratheon, who he didn't like very much. He was the Mad King's hand for a short time and a friend of Rhaegar, even hinted at being in love with him by George Martin. John Cunnington was exiled after his defeat by Robert and left for Essos to join the Golden Company as a sellsword. After Robert became king, House Cunnington was severely punished for their disloyalty. Their title of lords was demoted to just landed knights, and 90% of their land was distributed around. Illyrio and Varys informed Jon that Rhaegar's infant son Aegon was actually saved and not killed at the end of the rebellion. He raised the child, who he believes to be his old friend's son, under the names Griff and Young Griff. In the last book, they have returned to the Stormlands, with Jon easily taking Griffin's roost and plans to make Aegon or Young Griff king. Not much to say regarding the other locations in Cape Wrath, since they are just some regular houses aside from Weeping Town being a port city where some trading takes place. Somewhere on Cape Wrath is the home of House Seaworth. Davo Seaworth was given lands for his family after saving Stannis Baratheon and everyone in Storm's End by smuggling in food for them during a siege by the Tyrells. Stannis allowed him to pick out some land for himself and knighted him, making his family a house of landed knights, and eventually upgraded to full-fledged lords. As punishment for some of his acts in the past, Stannis also cut off some of his fingers on his left hand. It's not stated where their home is, but the titles of Lord of Rainwood is also given to Davos later in the story, so that narrows it down a little, I guess. How much time he spends here is questionable since Stannis' home became Dragonstone in the Crownlands after Robert's Rebellion, and Davos serves him with loyalty. The Slain is a river at the bottom center of the kingdom. The river is filled with rapids, whirlpools, and waterfalls, so it really fits with the theme of the Stormlands. A little west of the river is Summer Hall, one of the cooler locations. Summer Hall is near the base of the Red Mountains, a mountain range I went in depth with in my Dorne map video. The Red Mountains are not only in Dorne, but spread throughout the reach and the Stormlands. Summer Hall was a castle raised by the Targaryens in 188 AC, so only like 110 years before the current story. It was built in an area called the Dornish Marches and isn't like the other fortified castles since this was made just to be a vacation home in the summer with no need of defense. The Targaryens had fixed their relationship with Dorne by marriages with House Martell, so they were safe from any southern attacks. In 259 AC, King Aegon V would be extremely reckless and cause the entire castle to burn down. Aegon, or Egg, from the Duncan Egg short stories was actually a level-headed good king but he became desperate to bring dragons back into the family to restore power. With some dragon eggs, pyromancers, and wildfire, their attempt went horribly wrong, killing some of the people inside including Aegon and his heir. While the castle was burning down, the Mad King's sister wife gave birth to Rhaegar right outside where the tragedy was taking place. The ruins of Summer Hall would become the place Rhaegar loved best. The Dornish Marches is a chunk of land where countless battles have taken place between the Stormlanders and Dornishmen. The majority of the marches is Stormland territory, but some houses in the Reach are here too. The lords in this area are called Marcher Lords and have fighting in their DNA. The houses here are House Dondarrion of Blackhaven, House Selmy of Harvest Hall, House Cairn of Nightsong, and House Swan of Stonehelm that I mentioned earlier. Even their castles are built stronger like their fighters. Where the Red Mountains meet Cape Wrath in the Dornish Marches is called Red Watch. It's a region ruled by House Swan of Stonehelm and probably gets its name for the people here having to be vigilant of attack coming from Dorne through the Red Mountains. House Swan also rules over the Slain. 
Having this prominent river under their domain has made them the second most powerful family in this kingdom after the Baratheons. The only thing worth mentioning about Harvest Hall is that this is Sir Barristan the Bold's family home and they're known for their crops. Blackhaven is the last location I'm going to talk about and it's the seat of House Dondarrion. Barristan Selmy got his nickname The Bold in Blackhaven. When a tourney was taking place here, 10 year old Barristan tried to participate and was laughed at. A Targaryen prince allowed him to joust with him, but obviously defeated him. He named him Barristan the Bold for his brave efforts. This Targaryen prince was Duncan Targaryen, the heir of Aegon who died at the tragedy of Summerhall. The only Dondarrion we've seen is Beric who has had one of the crazier stories in the show and books. Even the story of how this house was founded is ridiculous. A messenger was making his way to the Storm King for some important reason, but was ambushed by two Dornishmen. He was only able to get away because his attackers were killed by a lightning strike. This Dondarrion made his way to the king in time and was awarded lordship. Their sigil even represents that miraculous event and matches the Stormlands theme very well. The Stormlands prioritized their fighters because of all the wars and battles they've had to constantly endure and never dedicated much efforts into building up their kingdom. This is especially relevant in the case of Marcher Lords. There are no cities in all of the Stormlands, but their castles are very strong. As for the next detailed map video, I'm deciding between the Reach, which is also heavily requested, and the Iron Islands. But again, let me know what you guys want to see. Thanks for watching.